I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share us with your network. We want everybody to know what we got going on. All right, y'all. So y'all have seen them on TV. You probably never met one, but you liked what they did. You weren't exactly sure how that even happened, but you thought for sure maybe you could do it as well. What am I talking about? How about private investigation? I know I get the coolest stuff. Y'all, I want you all to meet somebody who is in charge of, who is a, and who has a private investigative company. Her name is Sammy Swearingen, and she is the owner of True Lies Investigations. Hi, Sammy, how are you? Hey there, Ricky, how are you doing today? I am so good. Sammy, thank you so much. For joining me, this is going to be so good. My pleasure. I'm excited. <laughs> me too. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Sammy, oh my God, you're a private investigator. You're the first one I've ever met. And a lot of people don't know anybody who is a private investigator. So first of all, can you briefly tell me how you got involved in this? Oh, it can't be brief, but I'll tell you. Um I've been in, I was in the mortgage industry the, as a um, mortgage professional for 20 years, left, went to Japan for 13 years. So I recreated myself, went to Japan, opened a business there, stayed there for 13 years, came back, recreated myself again, went to school, got my AA in forensic science, my bachelor's in forensics, working on my master's in forensics. And then while I was trying to do my internship, I couldn't get into the, the, the crime lab. Everybody was trying to get in and it was full. So I had to do something. And so I got into the um, the public defender's office uh, in the investigation unit and did my internship. And that's where it all started. Wow. I, I love the part you reinvented yourself. You reinvented yourself. You reinvented yourself. So basically you are a transformer. Is that what yes. I got? <laughs> yes. Uh, and I think everybody should probably think about reinventing yourself every now and then. It's, it is kind of fun. I, I guess so. I reinvent <laughs> myself every month. I will get new hair. That's just, that's just me. Anyway, <laughs> so now you are a private, you're a PI for the public defender's office. Is that my understanding? No, that's where I did my internship. I have my own firm now called True Lies Investigations, but that's how I got into it. You okay. See that. But why did you decide to start your own agency what prompted something like that who does that well yeah I, I don't want everybody else making all the money I wanted to make it myself I'm instead of giving it to them I could do it if I can recreate myself several times over I can open the firm why not why <laughs> why not so yeah. but here's what's really interesting about true lies investigator not just the name because anybody who remembers our 80s movies y'all remember True lies. Okay, I'm just putting that out there. But you did not just start this firm. You actually own an all-female firm. Is that correct? That is correct. All-female minority firm. We're all women and we're all minority women. I women think that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations. And because of that distinction, you guys were also in a magazine, weren't you? Oh, yeah. We were featured in the um, Vanity Fair in April. Um, a uh, Denver businesswoman in the um, Colorado edition of Vanity Fair. And wow. yep, we were there. It was pretty exciting for us. We were pretty all jazzed about it. <laughs> I, I, I don't blame you. I think that is amazing. Now, Sammy, where is it that you're located right now? We are located, our office is in Denver, in okay. Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. It's so, Aurora, Denver, but it's like right on the border there. So, oh, I got you. Okay, so who are your clients? I mean, this is something I've always wondered about a PI. So, who who calls you? How do they find you? Is it really back alley stuff? Are you getting random phone calls going, "Hi, you don't know me, but I need your help"? I mean, is it like the equalizer? What are you doing? Uh, no, 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 no. We we don't solve a case in forty five minutes without commercials. Dang <laughs> it! Never mind. <laughs> um, we uh, we take we have private clients, people who call for 
than usual that you probably used to hearing cheating spouses or cheating partners or, you know, whatever. And then we also work for attorneys where we do criminal cases. Um, the attorneys call us in to investigate a case or work on a case for them that they don't have time to do. Um, so we, you know, we do anything from insurance fraud to uh, missing persons to criminal investigations um, to cheating spouses, all, you know, all of the whole gambit. Wow. And I like it that you said we don't solve a case in 45 minutes without commercials because <laughs> that is an absolutely misnomer because we don't know if you're not in the business. We just we really think it's that simple. It's you know, not. like say, for instance, you're doing a cheating spouse thing, you know, so it's not done in a day. You know, we don't get to cut out the parts we don't like. You're actually doing the work. We're doing the work and it could take you know, some cases we can get closed in, you know, as little as 10 or 15 days, some places go months because, because a lot of it has to do with surveillance mm -hmm. and <clears throat> catching someone doing something is just a matter of timing. You know, he, the, the cheating spouse may be a man or a woman, he or her, we may not see them do anything for weeks. I mean, we can't control somebody's behavior in their, their mm -hmm. time frame. And since the most clients can't afford to pay us to be on that person 24 seven, because right. it would be too expensive, we have to, you know, schedule it out and hopefully we get lucky. You know, one time we got lucky, the case was solved the same day we got it. Oh. I, you know, followed wow. him into a bar, me and another investigator followed him to a bar, sat next to him. And lo and behold, he was striking conversation, flirting with us. And then here comes the girlfriend mm. accusing us of, you know, trying to of cheating with the cheater, or, cheating with the cheater. Exactly. But they sat there and talked to us and kiss and hug it up. And our job was done. <laughs> <laughs> Check, please. We're out of here. <laughs> we're we're out of here. We're done. So, yeah, sometimes it's that quick and other times it could take weeks. Yeah. Wow. You, you mentioned something, too, you know, with being all female, you can do some things that a, a male cannot do. So what's the difference between having an all-female investigative team versus working with or around other males? What's that difference for you? Well, the big difference is that we get away with, as females, we get away with a, a lot, a lot. Mm. And, um, as, you know, we can be on the street doing surveillance, conducting surveillance, and nobody really pays attention. They may kind of wonder why we're sitting there, but not any big deal. But if a guy's sitting there, they think he's a creepy pedophile or something, you know? <laughs> um, we could, you know, follow somebody, mm -hmm. uh, especially when we're following other males. They tend to sometimes think we're flirting with them or, you know, we're following them because uh, we like them or something like yeah. that. They <laughs> never, ever respect surveillance. And wow. when we have to do witness interviews, people tend to open up to women a lot more. I don't know if it's that maternal thing that we just kind of exude sometimes when we don't even know it, but they just tend to open up to us. We can be, we're a lot softer. We're a lot easier to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot goes into, you know, a, a lot goes into the investigations that we do, but because we're female, we mm -hmm. get away a lot more than, than men do. We really do. Yeah. That all the women in the house say, Hey, just saying. <laughs> Hey. I, right. So what about licensing, Sammy? Because I, I'm sure, you know, concealed carry. Do you guys work with the police? What kind of licensing do you have to have to be a private investigator? Well, you most states, some states do not have any license requirements. Uh, Colorado did have licensing requirements and I did have my, well, I still technically do, but the governor sunsetted the licensing program in Colorado, which a lot of us professionals who have gone to school, who've got degrees, who study, who really works and, and works at our craft right. are kind of upset with. Um, so he's has sunsetted that. So licensing in Colorado is no longer required. Oh, um, no. So I wouldn't got licensed in different states just so I can have some credibility out there. Sure. And anybody that's looking for a private investigator in Colorado, mm -hmm. please ask, were you licensed previously before the governor sunset of the program. You want a licensed private investigator. Wow. You don't want Joe Bo that just said, oh, now I can be a private investigator and 
knows nothing about the business, knows nothing about the law, because we still have to know a little bit about the law. We're not lawyers. We can't give out legal advice, mm-hmm. but we still need to know a little bit about the law so that we stay within the law. Right. We, we, do not, we do not cross the line. My firm does not cross the line. We may get, we may straddle it a little bit, but we don't cross <laughs> it. Right. Because if we're working on a criminal case, if we break the law, that doesn't do our client any good. Does not That's so true. true. Um, wow. Yeah. So it just depends. But mm-hmm. in this state, we do not have to be licensed any longer. And they did that right after, I think, 2021. You know, you, you think of that, that, you know, you look at all the things going on in the country with, with the gun laws, you know, and how in some states, gay Texas, you, you can open carry and do all the things now because some licensings have been, I like what you said, sunset. They've basically been done away with, you know, which is a trip. But in when you're talking about investigations, what could go wrong if you don't have a license? Yeah. What I could mean, go wrong? What yeah, could go I mean. Wrong? Yeah, you can have some, you know, some stalkers, some rapists out there who decided to become a private investigator and now has access to information they shouldn't have. And oh that's, my gosh. that's really scary. That's really, really scary. And as far as weapons, I carry a weapon. I carry two. Right. Um, I have my concealed carry. I carry one on my waist and one on my ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, never had to draw it. The best way not to get into a fun gunfight is to not get into a gunfight back away. That's now, right. if I have to use it, <laughs> I will, but I'm not going to do it if I, you know, I've never yeah. had to draw my It's not something you just run around just no. like, woo, got it. I got a gun. No, uh-uh. yeah. although I carry it, I have it, you know, so. Yeah, I know. Now, with you doing this, and, and how long you said you've been, how long have you had the firm? Uh, since 2016. 16, okay. And I know your daughter works with you as well, right? Yes, she does. She was supposed to be here today, but she got tired. That's okay. We will touch base with her later. Now, how is that you, you know, doing what you do and knowing how dangerous it can possibly be? How is that working with your daughter? I work with two of my daughters and two of my kids. Yeah. Um, Well, they're trained. Everybody is trained and they know how they know what they're doing. They, they don't go out there unless they do. And we have a process serving side of the business, which even on its own can be dangerous because not today knocking on doors can just get you shot. Oh, you better say that. Y- yeah. yeah. So uh, we're all trained on how to de-escalate. Uh, we de-escalate a situation better than police de-escalate the situation. We Probably. know how to de-escalate and get out of there if we have to, because our lives just aren't worth any investigation. Mm-hmm. You know, we can come back another day. What do they say? Live to work another day. Yeah. We're, right. we're living. That is that is wisdom right there. So, Sammy, if somebody said, you know, I need a private investigator, what should they be looking for? Because I know you said earlier, make ask them where they were previously licensed, especially in the Colorado area. What other tips would you have with somebody who's looking for a private investigator? Oh, number one, I would look at, as far as their experience. Look at how long they've been in the business. How long? Ask how long they've been in the business. Ask for their resume. You know, a, a good private investigator should be happy to give you their resume, tell you what they've been doing, tell you what kind of cases. Um, and just ask, you know, questions, ask questions about your case. How are they going to handle it? And a lot of times, you know, if they can't give you an answer about how they're going to handle your specific case right then and there, don't worry about that. A lot of times I don't know how I'm going to handle a case. I sit down with my team and I say, look, this is the case we have. Let's talk about how we're going to do it. And then we go back. And, you know, okay, we've got a game plan and this is what we're going to do. Um, and if a private investigator says, oh, I've never um, been made on surveillance. Nobody's ever, you know, you know, caught me. That's not true. They're lying to you. We all get made at some point or other. Really? Some, at some point or another, we're going to get made. Somebody's going to figure it out. Yeah. Not often, but it happens. Sure. You know, so. Um, wow. Yeah. That, yeah. That is just so amazing to me. Now, Sammy, do you. Do you take clients from other states or is it only in in your no. state that you work? No, we take clients from other states. We have, um, and we also take clients from other countries. I have an investigator in Australia and I have one in the UK okay. um, and part of our firm. So we take clients from all over. 
Oh my gosh, that that is awesome. So Sammy, if somebody watching wanted to talk to you or wanted to continue this conversation, what's the best way for them to reach you? Okay, they can reach me through my email address at Sammy, S-A-M-M-I-E dot S at True Lies investigations.com. Sounds good. Y'all don't worry. If you didn't get this and you needed a private investigator, all of Sammy's contact information is going to be in the description below. And don't forget, make sure to like, subscribe, and share our share us and our information with your friends and your networks. Sammy, my friend, before I let you go, we got to play a game. Do I get a prize? Girl, you get bragging rights. You can have whatever you want. I'm a fan. I don't care. <laughs> so, Sammy, this game is called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things. And you off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you okay. ready to play, my friend? I am ready. Let's do this. Flowers or plants? Plants. Hotel or tent? Hotel. I know, right? I ain't sleeping outside. <laughs> I ain't about it. Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. I can't get the hair wet. <laughs> you, you better say that, girl. Okay. <laughs> practical joker or I don't play like that? Oh, practical joker. Life is too short. Oh Gotta my have God, some time. That is hilarious. Candlelight or moonlight? Mm, I'm going to say candlelight because the weather conditions can mess up that moonlight. <laughs> That's true, too. Okay. I'm a planner or I make it up as I go? Both. Okay. A spontaneity. I like it. I like it a lot. Go all day or I need a nap? I'll go all day. Okay. Slow dance or shake that thing? Shake that thing. <laughs> Well, no, I, wait, I, wait a minute. I like a good belly rub now and then. So oh, both. Lord. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm just saying. Okay. Um, clap back or let it slide? Let it slide. You are a nice woman. You are a nice woman. And finally, Sammy, what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? Girl, have fun. Enjoy life. Do your best at anything you do everything you do you just make sure you're the number one in all of it I love or that. try to always try yeah. to yeah you see <laughs> it's it's the sass for me it's it's the head thing girl I love it <laughs> Sammy thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with me I appreciate it thank you very much I, I I've enjoyed it it's a lot more fun than I thought I was really nervous <laughs> why you know everything I mean oh my gosh no need I'm glad you're here but we are going to talk some more and for you all watching thank you all so much for being here that's it for this time but don't worry we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents